Statistics and Excel, Dice Central Limit Theorem, Example Problem, Part Number 4. Get ready and some coffee, because it's time to get realistic with statistics and Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay, because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build... First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one. Because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product. Because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty, to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. This entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you can start from this point just building the tables as we go from here or possibly simply looking at this from a theory standpoint about probability or statistics more generally. If you do have access to this workbook, there are three tabs down below the example practice and the blank tab example in essence the answer key the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less excel formatting the blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet and we'll be continuing with the blank part of the worksheet practicing our excel skills as we build it so let's give a quick recap of what we have done thus far. We're looking at concepts which are related to the idea of the central limit theorem, a core concept within probability, especially in application to statistics more broadly for inductive reasoning. For example, when we're trying to take samples about a population and get some information about the entire population extracted from what we know about a sample of a population. So our problem here, we're dealing with dice, and you could think about, for example, infinite number of die, and we're taking a sample in essence of one dice, and then two dice, and then three dice, and so on and so forth. We started with the idea of taking one dice, we're graphing out the information related to one dice, and then we said, what if we had two dice? And we summed up the totals, and then make a histogram of the totals of two dice, and tried to map out the two dice and the one dice on the same graph using basically the same total numbers of the graph or area. And then we said, okay, let's go to three dice and we can look at the shapes of the graphs for one, two, and three dice. And then we went to four dice. We changed to a, a line graph instead of a bar graph and then five dice. And you can see the change in the shapes of the curves here as we increase the number of die. Next, we wanted to say, that's great, but I'd like to take the average of the dice uh, and, and instead. And so instead of counting the total number of the dice, we're going to say, let me roll the five dice and then take the average, whatever the total number is, divided by the number of dice. And we did that for one dice, and then obviously one dice is what it is, and then two dice. And we mapped out the average, and we saw that we get the mean uh, or average of 3.5 for the one dice and the two dice. But it's, there's a difference between the standard deviation, which of course is getting smaller, which means that the spread around this information uh, is, is getting lessened. So we're more centralized. If we have the three dice, we had a similar kind of outcome. Now we still have the same mean, but now our data is becoming more of our nice bell shape that we're expecting to be happening. And it's more centralized, giving us more confidence if it was like a, like a, a sample around basically that middle point, uh, the, the mean, which in our case is the average number, that 3.5. 
Here's our graph for a histogram. And then here's our graph up top that we created. We're gonna do the same thing and, and analyze this with four dice and then five dice. And we expect the outcome to be similar in that we're still gonna have the middle point be the 3.5, but we would expect the standard deviation to get smaller, meaning the graph is gonna get more peaked, more of the information being around that central point. If we take a look at our example uh, thought experiment we're imagining we go to a gas station and instead of just paying three and a half dollars in our example you can pay anywhere between one and six dollars and you have to roll the dice in order to see what you're going to pay so that means that you could roll the dice and get like a one and you'd only pay a dollar but you could roll the dice and get a six now if you just rolled if you went to the gas station that just has one day then you have an equal likelihood of paying either $1 or $6. So you could get lucky or you could get very unlucky. If you go to the gas station that rolls three dice and you take the average price of the three dice, well, then it's still possible to get a low price, but it's much more likely that you're going to be paying closer to that central point of the 3.5 uh, and less likely that you're going to be paying the high end of $6 or $1, right? Where central, the data is becoming more centralized basically about around that central point. That's the idea. All right, let's go to the next one. We're going to go, we're going to do the same thing with four die. So average, let's say four dice, four dice average. And then I'm going to make this black and white up top again, home tab, thought group, black and white. And now I'm just going to pick the data. We already have the data over here, all the different combos of the four dice over here somewhere. That's five dice. So here's the four dice information in AI. I'm going to just take all of this. I'm holding down shift doot, 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 and right arrow. And then I'm going to hold down control shift and go all the way down. It's a lot of data, but it's easy to pick it up because we're in Excel. We're going to copy that. And then I'm going to go back up top and then go back to the right and then we're just going to paste it right there boom control v paste it that's our starting point now you could if if you didn't uh, work on the prior worksheet so you don't have access to this workbook you could create this uh, by, by basically putting the all the different combinations of dice together but we did that in a prior presentation i won't go over it again but it's a lot of information fairly easy to build if you just do it one at a time, one die, then two die, then three die, then four die, because you can copy and paste it. But we won't go through that again. We're going to say this, but that's all of our combos that we have. So then let's make a skinny DG. I'm going to make a skinny DG. And then we're going to put our bends in place. The bends are going to be, I'm just going to stick with the one, two to six bends, even though, oh, hold on a second. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's undo that. Undo 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 one more thing we have to do we have to add an average let's just put it ave and then i'm going to format paint this one and paint brush it over here and i'm going to say this is going to be the average of these four do, 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 and enter so if we have four dice a yellow an orange a red and a black and we get all ones then we divide it by four because there are four dice and you get a one let's go ahead and add some decimals and then double click the fill handle bringing it down if you if you rolled four four dice a yellow an orange a red and a black and you got a one one two one that comes out to a total of five divided by four is 1.25 so in that case you'd be paying the price at the gas station right 1.25 and so on and so forth as we go let's select here Control shift down i'm going to make that blue and bordered home tab thought group border dropping it down and if you don't have that blue it's in the more colors it's in the standard color wheel i'm just picking that light blue right there nice soft tone it keeps people calm that's what it does it's a calming color i'm going to take all of these bring it down i don't like people getting all agitated when i'm trying to do my excel i need to be calm okay so then i'm gonna let's make a skinny dh skinny dh do, 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 do. And now we can put our bends in place. So I'm just gonna go from bends one, two, buckle the shoe and then drag it down after your shoe is buckled so you don't trip because you have to 
take it down to six. And then I'm going to basically say that's the end of our bends. So we'll do a frequency calculation. Frequency, which is a spill array formula, which I probably spelled wrong. I don't think I, I can never spell frequency. I'll never be able to spell it. Okay, don't say never. I'm, I can do it. I could spell frequent, whatever. I don't even want to. I don't even want, I don't even care, man. Anyways, we're going to say this is going to be frequency. And then we want to take this average column and control shift down and then control backspace to go back up top and then comma. And then we pick up the array of, of the, of the bends. So here's our bends. So obviously, we don't have just static numbers. Therefore, it's going to be difficult for us to use a count function like we did in prior presentations. That's why you use the frequency. And we could change the bend levels, but we're going to keep it just one, two, three, four, five, six, and enter. Spills it down. This is the to This is over six, over six, which there aren't any, which is like our check number. And then our total, I'm going to say, is just alt equals. And boom, there's our total. Let's make this black and white up top for the headers. Home tab, font, Groot, making it black, making it white, making it centered. Then we'll select our data, make it blue and bordered as has been our custom. Border it and blue it. There we go, yo. Oh no, don't get, don't get into the yo thing. What do you mean, yo? I've, okay. Here we go. I'm going to then, let's make a... Uh, a graph from this now this time i'm just going to make a line graph instead of a bar graph yo <laughs> yo 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 and i'm going to go to the, the insert uh charts let's make a line graph there it is there it is Edamosa. it's beautiful and we're going to say that this is going to be for four dice and then okay let's put this over here Okay, so there's our graph. Now, let's put the other graphs on top of it so we can see how it looks compared to the other graphs. Let's pick up our data that we had over here to do it. So we're going to pick up uh, this info. We'll just copy all this stuff. Let's just copy. Actually, I got a copy from here down. Let's copy this down. Copy that. Roger out. Copy. And then we'll put that over here. It's gonna go underneath right there. Boom, just paste it normal. And then I'm gonna right click and paste it one, two, three, just the values. So I get the formatting uh, and, uh, and, it doesn't, and it doesn't mess up any, any uh, formulas. It's just hard coded now, it's typed in numbers. All right, this was how many, this one was the, how many dice? Let's, let's, this is gonna be four dice four dice and this is going to be th this was three dice let's do our percent of the total percent of the total because i want to make this data not out of 216 but out of this number so i'm going to use the same percentages of the total so we can get the shape of the graph but the same in essence area of it so i'm going to say home tab paintbrushy paintbrush we're going to say this equals the one over the 216 that bottom number i don't want it to move down when i copy it down so f4 on the keyboard dollar sign before the letter and the number enter put my cursor back on it we'll percentify to recognize add some decimals and then double click the fill handle button it goes down i'm going to delete the 100 and re-input it but do an alt equals so it sums up for the double check of 100 Mui B to the end, B in looks good. Now we have our adjusted column. I'm just going to call ADJ, which is going to be a total of one, two, nine, six, because I want it to be out of this total instead of this total, which I'm just going to use the percentage to do. So we'll say this equals this percent times that new total. I want that second number not to move down when I copy it down. F4 in the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and the number, enter. And then let's double click to, to drop it down. And then we will say alt equal to sum it up. And it comes out to that same number. Mui B to the end, B in, looks good. Let's go to the home tab, font group, 
and black and white it, center it. Oh, hold on a second. Let's just format paint this over here. And then let's blue and border this. Blue border, bam, blue border, bam. All right, and then down here, I want this one also. This is for four bends. This is for three bends. This is for two bends. Uh, these are the bends, but there's two dice. <laughs> All right, so this, again, I want this not out of 216, but out of 1296. So I'm just going to take this last bit. I'm going to take that percent times the 1296 F4 on the keyboard so it doesn't move down when I copy it down. Enter, put my cursor on it, double click the fill handle button, dropping it down, but not that last bit because I want to sum it up different by going Alt equal to give me a double check of the sum. 1296, 1296 looks Mui B to the N. One more time with the one die situation. I don't want it to be out of 216, but rather out of that number. Let's adjust this. This should be, I want it to be out of one comma two nine six oh uh, that's not a comma that's a decimal that's a decimal dummy i am not a dummy okay T this should be one comma two nine six and this is going to be equal to this times this f4 on the keyboard so that it doesn't move down when we drop it down. Double click in the fill handle button, deleting that last bit so we can sum it up. Alt equals, summing it up. There's the 1,296. Okay, so now I'm gonna add these to this graph. Before I do that, let's also add a histogram. So if I select all this data, Control Shift down, and then I'm gonna say Alt or, or control backspace. Oh man, let's just scroll up this way. You got, so, it, so it's gonna be up here somewhere, the graph. Insert, let's do a charts, let's make a histogram. Boom, there it is. And this is gonna be for how many dice do we have? Four dice, four dice. It's getting dicey in here. Oh, it's getting dicey. Okay, let's click on, let's play with our buckets. And we're gonna say that the buckets have that weird peak that's happening. Why is that? Let's go to point two. All right, that looks good, but now it's got like a, some empty spaces. Let's go to point two five. That looks pretty good. Let's keep it at that. So there's our buckets with just a normal histogram, but I can't really add the other data points into it like I can with this one. This one, I only I only use the buckets of zero to one, right? And then above one to two, and then above two to three. This one has the buckets of one to 1.25, right? So, but here, I can add the other data to this one. So to do that, first, I want to add a legend. This thing is going to be legendary. There's the legend. And then I'm going to close this out. And then I'm going to go to the chart design, select the data, Let's edit the data first because I need to put the legend, not series one, but edit it. Let's call this four dice, four dice. And then I'll change the data. Wait, no, the data was okay. Oh man, I didn't want it. Let's cancel that. Let's do it again. Edit. I'm just going to call it four dice. I don't need to change the data, dude. And then we'll add another one. And then this one is going to be with the three dice. Delete the thing down here, and then I add the data, dude. Add the data, dude. Okay, uh, that's going to be out of these ones, the three dice data, and then okay. And then add another one, two dice, and then delete this thing and add the data, dude. Dishes are done, dude. We're going to add that and say okay, and then one more adding. This is the one dice, which should be said die, singular, but this is not an English class, and therefore, you know what I'm talking about. And then we're going to say, okay. So there we have it. So now you've got what's happening here. This thing is becoming, uh, on the four dice, more peaked towards that middle point, which would be 3.5, but we don't have a 3.5 bucket, right? We have the four bucket. So it's getting peaked more, which means more of the data is getting closer packed to that middle point. 
what's that happening in terms of of our tables here we can say okay this is like one two three four dice and we copied our let's just dice let's just copy our table that we had before for the mean and the standard deviation for the sample we calculated this for one dice over here so the one die and and let's add some let's copy it down and then add some decimals so there it was before to three dice and now we're going to do the four dice four dice equals the average tab of our actual data control shift down enter so it's once again if i add a decimal 3.5 but the standard deviation standard div for the sample is now to control shift down is now to the 0.85 what's that mean standard deviations going down which means there's less spread in in the data around the central point which is the mean or average of the 3.5 so 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 we're getting closer to that middle point and you might say if it was it might say that's like more accurate if it was a sample depending on how you're gonna you know what you're using this for and whatnot uh in our case for the gas station scenario it means that if you're throwing four dice you're more likely to pay something closer to 3.5 rather than having a higher likelihood of paying like one dollar or six dollars on the extremes we're getting closer the data is becoming closer to that central point all right let's go ahead and make this black white let's make it black white and we'll do it one more time with five dice this is and then it's getting too the data is getting too crazy to go higher than that but you get the idea you're getting the idea hopefully i and so we're going to say, okay, I'm sensing a bit of sarcasm. Well, I would sure hope so because I'm laying it on awfully thick. Okay, this is going to be five dice average. We're going to then say home tab, font group, and then black, white. Let's go ahead and pick up our data for the five die that we have over here lot of data but we already did it before and we can just copy and paste it why because we're in excel that's what excel does here's the five die one two three four five red yellow orange black i got them mixed up but there they are control shift down control c for the copy i'm going to just move it back up with the little handle over here drag it to the right and we'll paste that data down control v boom just put it down right there then we're going to add an average column we're going to do this faster because we've done it before average or the mean format paint bring that over equals the average formula of the black the red the yellow the green die there's our number one adding some decimals number group decimalizing it and then double clicking the fill handle button to bring it down so obviously if i had a one, a one, a one, a two, a one, that would come out to six. Uh, six divided by five dice would give us the 1.2. If I got a green one, a yellow one, an orange one, a red three, a black one, that would come out to seven. Seven divided by five is the 1.4 on average. Control shift down to blue and border this thing. Blue or bordered and blue. Consider it border blue. Let's take all of this columns and make it skinnier to save some space. I hate that you're just wasting space. Excel space is valuable, the landscape. Let's go ahead and then make a skinny over here. And then we're going to put our bends for five. This is for five dice. Five dice bends. We're going to just keep it at one, two to six. One to six. Do, 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 do and then we'll just say okay let's do our frequency 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 you spell like a freak frequency okay whatever spell check is we have spell check we don't need to spell really good anymore 
This is going to be equal to the frequency, which is going to be a spill array tab, taking our data in the average column, control shift down, boom, control backspace, comma, the array, boom, there it is. It's just going to spill it down, spills it down, just like when I knocked over my cup of milk over, this is going to be over six. And so there's nothing over six. That's a good check. And then the total is going to be all to equal the sum of that stuff. Let's make a, uh, let's make that border blue. Taking home tab font group blue bordered boom. Let's add our graph selecting our data. Just go to the insert bam. And we want a line graph starting with the good old line graph. There it is with five dice. Okay. And so then we can add a histogram. Let's select this thing. Control shift down, control backspace, insert. Let's make a histogram to start off with histogram for five dice, five dice. That looks good. Let's change the buckets. Let's play with the buckets to see what the best distance is. Point three is leaving some spaces. Let's try point two. And that looks pretty good. Let's add some data points on top of that. Okay. So there's our buckets and our data points on them. All right. That's cool. So now let's add our other stuff on our graph over here by taking all the data over here for the four bends, three bends, two bends, one bend, copy it, put that over here, control V and right click paste it one, two, three. So the formulas don't mess us up. All right, we're going to take our percent. This is going to be the for the four bends. This is going to be the percent of the total. I want to get my ratios first, which is just going to be this number divided by the total that we came out to before. I don't want the total to move down. So F4 on the keyboard, enter, put my cursor on it, percentify to recognize, add some decimals, double click the fill handle button, drop it down, delete the total because I want to retotal it up this way. So it gives me that double check that it's a hundred percent. Then I want to have my adjusted numbers to be this number, seven comma seven, seven, six, so that I have comparable numbers. So I'm going to say this is going to be equal to these percentages times that total F4 on the keyboard. So it doesn't move down when I copy it down, enter, put in my cursor back on it, double click in it to drop it down. And then we'll say alt equals to sum it up. There we have it. That number ties out. Looks good. Looks muy B to the N, otherwise known as BN. Home tab, font group. How you being? I'm, I'm not settling for just being, man. I'm muy being. I'm muy being. Then I'm going to go to the home tab, font group. Just beings for hippies. That's not what I do. I'm muy being. And then I'm going to say this one's going to be. Uh, seven comma seven seven six and then once again I want this total so this will equal this times this f4 on the keyboard enter put my cursor on it drop it down double click in the fill handle button delete the last one because I want to sum it up alt equals this way boom there's our double check number why is that a decimal that should be a comma get it right get it right don't accept excuses around here that's all you do is make these stupid excuses i'm sick and tired okay i don't know what where that came from let's take this number times this same thing f4 on the keyboard and enter fill handle button dropping it down deleting the end alt equals to sum it up boom Ultra vase one more time. Uno vase mas por favor. One more time. This is going to be seven comma seven seven six. This will equal this times that number. F four on the keyboard. Enter. Clicking on the double fill fill handle and then Alt equal to sum it back up. Okay, let's add all of that data into our graph. So now I can just say let's. Let's add the legend, legend, and then we'll just go, okay, 
chart design data. I'm going to adjust this name to call this five dice. And then we'll add another one called four dice. Delete this bit so I can put the data in it. That's going to be this part. And then OK. And then add another one called three dice. And then delete this bit. And then we're going to go to the three dice data, which is right there. I'm not going to pick up the zero. OK. And then we'll add another one. We're going to call it two dice. And then delete the range because we have to put a new, we have to put, that's where we put the range for the two dice one. Two dice. I'm not going to add the zero. And then one more time, add for one dice. It should be die. It should be die. I'm not even watching this anymore. You don't even spell it right. Whatever, dude. If that's going to bother you so much, then you can just, you can just not watch if that's how you want to be. I'm going to, I'm going to call it one die dice. Okay, so there, so now you can see, now we can see that, that as we add more dice going towards the population, which we're, which we're saying is basically, you know, infinity, right? Right. It's getting more peaked towards that middle point, which is actually 3.5. Again, we could change our buckets, but it gets a little messy when we change our buckets using a frequency calculation over here. With the histogram, it gives, does the buckets automatically, but you can't put the multiple charts on each other quite as easily and so on. Let's do our little table one more time on the table. So this is gonna be our, our uh, dice where we had one, two, three, four, five die now. We've got the mean, we got the STD for the sample. We're gonna say this equals what we had before when we calculated this 3.5. I'm doing this kind of fast because we're running long here, people. We're running long and we've, we don't, we can't, my supervisors are getting angry at me for doing, taking too much time, but I think it's, we have to give the time to do it right. So we're going to, we're going to try to do it right and avoid me getting yelled at. That's impossible. That's impossible. I'm going to control shift down equals and then number group okay and then this equals the standard deviation of the sample and this is going to be this control shift down enter add some decimals and there it is so what happens the the mean is the 3.5 and but the standard deviation as you can see is getting tighter more of the data data being closer to that middle point which in some cases you can think of that as us being kind of more confident could it's going to tie out to confidence levels and so on as we think about the bell curve and whatnot but that's that's the idea and uh and uh, so there we have it so in terms of our gas station situation again obviously if you have the five dice you're more likely even than the four dice to be spending or paying the three dollars and fifty cents for your gas whereas if you just rolled one dice you could you're more likely to be paying somewhere anywhere between one and six dollars right so it just depends how you want to how risky you want to be uh in terms of which gas station you go to the one dice the two dice the three dice four dice the five dice gas station to pay your to pay your bill so we're gonna say uh black and white let's make this black and white and let's make this bordered blue border blue uh it's not blue where did the blue go don't day don't day okay let's put this up top let's do a spell check see all the spellings did it really that can't be right i spelled everything total change count if i'll ignore that total change keep on checking count if let's ignore that frequency change that frequency change that i should change all of them total change it change it frequency change all of those to make it right okay there it is